Can we recover data from RAID 1 setups? And how? This is what we talk about today. Hey guys and girls, nice to meet you. I'm Michael with the Recovery It team and over here on our YouTube channel we provide you with a lot of practical data recovery solutions, so subscribe. Today's topic is about RAID 1, all the benefits of mirroring your data and how it compares against more traditional configurations. And we are also going to explore what to do in case of troubles and whether we can recover data out of broken RAID 1 setups. Diving into the topic, a redundant array of independent disks, also known as RAID or disk mirroring, offers you the ability to replicate all your data onto one or more disks. It's a redundancy technique through mirroring, meaning that the data is written identically to two or more drives. This can be a pretty great option for you to protect all your valuable data if data security and replication is a core emphasis of your business. It's a simple concept. The RAID device copies all your actual data on one disk and keeps it secure by replicating all your data on another independent drive. I think the benefit is quite obvious. In case one of the drives fails, you continue to have access to your data because it's already being mirrored and that's especially valid for RAID 1. Who is RAID 1 suitable for? That's actually a very good question and most of the times when it comes to RAID levels that would go to enterprise grade of data replication or in case you really want to make sure that your data is not going to vanish all of a sudden in case your primary hard drive breaks. You can mirror all kinds of data, including transactional applications, operating systems, email systems and so on. RAID 1 is also compatible with SSDs, which basically means anyone can use it. One important thing to clarify is that in order RAID 1 to exist, you actually need at least two drives, meaning that not all laptops and mini PCs would be RAID 1 capable, but for most desktop PCs that's very easily achievable. If we may apply more systematic approach and divide the pros and the cons in two major sections, as part of the positives you're going to have high quality read performance, meaning that RAID 1 copies the data at faster speeds, offers top-notch fault tolerance and data redundancy, and is also very easy to set up and use. As for the drawbacks, RAID 1 just utilizes half of your total storage capacity, can be expensive as it requires obviously doubled the investment, and to replace a faulty drive in certain cases you might have to power down your system. Before we go in direction troubleshooting and data recovery, we should better understand how it actually works. So let's talk about the setup prior to all this. There are certain criteria that your configuration needs to meet. First of all, it needs to support RAID 1. Secondly, you're gonna need a pair of hard drives or SSDs and know that these drives should better be identical. Most of the time you're going to have to do the configuration as part of the BIOS or the UEFI of the system. However, there are some software utilities which can help you to do that online in Windows 10 or Windows 11. Let me show you one of the simplest ways to build a RAID 1 setup and in order to do that we're going to use Microsoft's Windows. Go to the control panel, navigate to storage spaces from the list of icons and enter the setup menu. One of the things we could select is to create a new pool in storage space under the Manage Storage Spaces area. Then the Windows operating system is going to check all the hard drives that are on the system. After that we can see a list of the drives that can be configured for RAID 1. Choose one drive and click on Create Pool in order to kickstart the procedure. Further, you can rename the new storage pool and designate a drive letter, for example J, and then you can select a new file system by clicking on the drop-down menu. After you make all the changes, click on Resiliency type box and then select Two-way mirror option, which is basically RAID 1. Finally, to complete the configuration, click on Create storage space. Wait for a while in order the operating system to process and configure the new storage space and voila! You're done! Now you're able to see an additional drive by accessing the Windows File Explorer. You see, that's been fairly easy and now you have fully functional RAID 1 configuration on your Windows, where all your files are being mirrored, meaning that you can have the tolerance of one of the two drives part of this configuration to be failing and you would still be able to access all the data. Now, in case 
everything goes down temporarily or in case we have some other issues on the storage area, I'll give you some ideas what to do and how to recover your data. Here we're going to showcase Recover It, an innovative, intuitive and very easy to use software that can easily help you to retrieve a number of different types of files such as photos, music, documents, emails and so on. As a starter, we launch the software, then we locate the RAID 1 setup where we want to recover the files from. We proceed with the scanning process where Recovery starts to scan the drive and search for the lost files. You can patiently wait or interrupt the scanning procedure as long as you can see the data to be retrieved. You can also use the preview function in order to verify whether that's the file you're looking to recover. For a successful recovery, it is important to export the saved files on a separate storage device, such as a USB drive or an external drive. With Recoverit, you can even recover files lost or deleted from your Dropbox account. That's how powerful the system can be. With data, it almost always would be the safer, the better. RAID 1 is a great idea and it mirrors all your data. Could be that in some very isolated scenarios, both of your drives actually fail. So this is when Recoverit could actually help you to retrieve all your lost files in case we don't talk about a serious hardware issue. So in case you have other follow-up questions, make sure to be commenting in the section down below the video. As usual, we'll be back with more practical data solutions, so make sure to be subscribed to our channel. I'm Michael and wish you a fantastic day. Bye!